What's up, future respiratory therapists? In this video, we're talking all about metabolic disturbances and mechanical ventilation. You see, we're real good when it's a respiratory disturbance and knowing what to do, but what about when it's a metabolic disturbance? Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated, we're talking all about metabolic disturbances and mechanical ventilation. Now we're gonna start this off by looking at an arterial blood gas and deciphering what exactly is the problem here. So what we see here is that we have an acidotic pH. So our pH is down, our CO2 is down, our bicarb is also down, and our PaO2 is elevated. Now, for this discussion, PaO2 is really not going to be part of the conversation. We know that our PaO2 is elevated because this patient is hyperventilating. But the question is, why are they hyperventilating? Well, they're hyperventilating because they are trying to compensate for the reduction in bicarb. That's causing the acidosis and the patient's CO2 is down. Now, you may think about a couple of disease processes that come to mind here. The major one is probably DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, when perhaps you've seen this patient before. Well, how is that patient breathing? Well, we know that this takes us back to our early patient assessment learnings where we learned about Cushmall's respirations. And we know that Cushmall's breathing is related to very deep and very fast breathing pattern. So they're taking large tidal volumes very, very quickly. Now, the question is why? Well, the answer is, is because of the metabolic acidosis, the body's compensatory mechanism is to decrease the CO2. To decrease CO2, we have to increase minute ventilation. So we breathe faster and we breathe larger tidal volumes. Together, we increase our minute ventilation. Now, this is what happens. Now, remember, the second part of this video topic is and mechanical ventilation. So if you were to intubate this patient, the question is, is how do I provide mechanical ventilation to this patient? This is very, very important because if you take this patient and you intubate them for whatever reason that happens and you normalize their minute ventilation to a normal five to seven liters per minute for most, most humans, then guess what's going to happen? Their CO2 is going to go up because a normal minute ventilation is going to lead to a normal CO2 level. So as the CO2 comes back up, this is going to push the pH even further south, okay? Now we wouldn't want that to happen, right? You wouldn't wanna take your patient and say, hey, we're gonna help you put them on mechanical ventilation and put them in a worse state of acidosis. So the important thing here is, is that when you intubate a patient that is in a severe metabolic acidosis, it is very, very important that you understand your role as the respiratory therapist that now, because there is a mechanical ventilator in the picture, that you are the compensating factor. You are in control of the minute volume or the minute ventilation being delivered from the ventilator to the patient. And so you want to make sure that that ventilator is continually delivering a minute ventilation that is going to continually help to compensate for this metabolic acidosis until it starts to resolve. And then you can switch and start turning down the minute ventilation. But you don't want to go to a normal minute ventilation because that CO2 is going to rise, causing your pH to become even more acidotic. Okay, so remember, you are the compensator in this situation. Now, all of our patients aren't always in metabolic acidosis. Sometimes they are in a metabolic alkalosis, right? And so we see that here on this state, we have a elevated pH, that's an alkalosis. We have a normal CO2. We have a bicarb of 36, that's increased. That's what's causing the pH to be 7.55. And we have a normal PaO2. Now, again, PaO2 doesn't matter in this story. 
because we know that PaO2 doesn't really play a role in acid-base balance. Now, you may say, well, hold on. If a patient is hypoxemic, then they will hyperventilate. That's true. That's not what we're talking about here when we're talking about metabolic alkalosis and metabolic disturbances. So here's what's going to happen when you have this patient. You see, because the, the pH is alkalotic, you see, the body's compensatory mechanism is to hypoventilate. Egan says this in chapter 14 of the 12th edition. It says the expected compensatory response to a metabolic alkalosis is hypoventilation, CO2 retention. Now, look, right now, we're at a normal CO2 level. This patient is on mechanical ventilation, and, and we're, we're providing that. So remember, we're talking about during mechanical ventilation. So if the patient is receiving full support, then we have a normal CO2, but we're alkalotic. Why? Because of the bicarb. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to say, you know what? I think I can, I think I can extubate this patient. And you're going to put them into a spontaneous breathing trial, and they're not going to breathe. Why are they not going to breathe? Because their central drive to breathe is assessing this and they're saying compensate for that alkalosis. And so they are going to hypoventilate, which means they may not take a breath for a while. I'll tell you, this is a true story. I, I came in, I got a report on a patient and the report was is that we're trying to extubate her, but I think we're gonna have to trach her because she won't breathe during our spontaneous breathing trials. And I looked at the blood gas and I said, well, has she been 7.55 for the last couple of days? And they said, well, I don't know. I said, well, that's what she is this morning. They said, well, okay. So I went to the patient. I put them in CPAP. All sedation was off. Put them in CPAP and watched them breathe spontaneously. Well, guess what? The patient didn't breathe spontaneously. So I said, okay. I See, I understand what's going on here. I understand the process. You see, this CO2 has to go up to bring this pH down until we get to a point to where the neural drive says, take a breath. You see, the, the, the neural drive is asleep right now because it's going hypoventilate. We don't need to get rid of acid because we're so alkalotic. So it's not going to breathe. So put the patient in, in CPAP. I took the, the apnea alarm and turned it all the way to 60 seconds. I'm standing right there with the patient, monitoring the patient. So don't, don't come at me like that's dangerous. It's not. I'm right there in front of the patient. And 60 seconds went by. Everything stayed stable. I reset the alarm. And another 60 seconds went by. This is now two minutes of apnea. And around the two minute and 20 second mark, a breath happened. The patient started breathing and her tidal volumes were efficient. Her tidal volumes were at a good rate. And we extubated that patient 30 minutes later. Why? Because I understood that it was this pH that was causing the patient to be apneic. And if you only give this patient 30 seconds or 20 seconds before your apnea alarm goes off and it says apnea, apnea, and you go, oh, patient's apneic, to terminate the SVT, they're not ready. You, you gotta realize that there's only a few reasons patients don't breathe. One, they're brain dead. That's, 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 that's a fact. Two, they're over sedated. Or three, they're in an extreme alkalosis and their neural drive to breathe is suppressed, just like the same story with over sedation. It's the only reason people don't breathe. There's only, they're either, they're, they're, there is no neural drive because they're brain dead or their neural drive is suppressed. You're the respiratory therapist and you know what would cause a suppressed respiratory drive. Excessive sedation, perhaps severe alkalosis. That's what you need to know about metabolic disturbances. Know how you need to compensate for an acidosis and then know how you need to let the body compensate 
for an alkalosis and know that you have to be patient to let that process happen. And this brings us to our summary. Understand your role. Know who you are. Know who you are as the RT. Know when you need to compensate and know when you need to be patient and let the patient CO2 levels build up to allow them to start to breathe. Compensate appropriately during times of metabolic acidosis. 100% you want to aid that patient in recovering from that metabolic acidosis and not harm them by making the acidosis worse. You got to be patient. Be patient during times of metabolic alkalosis. You could probably get a lot of these patients off the vent. Just got to let that CO2 rise until that neural drive kicks back in and starts generating spontaneous efforts. And then finally, be the expert. Understand these things. Deep dive into them. If, if this didn't make sense, dive into the books to start to understand how the respiratory compensation system during metabolic disturbances works. And when you're in control of the respiratory system during mechanical ventilation, you're the compensator. So understand how that, that, that plays a part and how now you are in control of those features. Thank you for watching. Before I let you go, I want to tell you about one exciting thing. Go check out this free course you can access uh, to get into my Restory Coach free resources and free access to cheat sheets. Lots of good stuff in there. I'm going to put the link to this below. You can go get into that, 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 that course right there for free. If you are interested and you're looking to pass your board exams, check out the TMC Boot Camp as well as the Clinical Simulation Boot Camp. They are here to help you pass that exam on the first attempt. Go check them out. They're all here on this page. And there's also a, a, a course about AVG interpretation and uh, basic respiratory therapy pharmacology to help you through your schooling to uh, have a better understanding of these complicated subjects. That's metabolic disturbances and, and mechanical ventilation. I'm Respiratory Coach. Find me on YouTube, which where you are now. Hey, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button and the like button and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what you think about this video. Also, Instagram at Respiratory Coach, TikTok at Respiratory Coach. Come check it out. LinkedIn at Joe Lewis. Um, if you don't have a LinkedIn account and you're watching this right now, go sign up and get one. I promise you a lot of good things happening over on LinkedIn right now. Check it out and take advantage of that. Finally, if you have any questions, send me an email, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. I will respond. I will get back with you. I promise you. Hey, remember at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.